AM 1460, the new WXBR. You are listening to the Metro South Morning Show. Peter Zimborn, Mike Pava here with you on a Wednesday morning. And as has been the case during the 7 o'clock hour all week, we are chatting with candidates for City Council at Large in Brockton. And today in studio, we have Craig Pina, candidate for Councilor at Large. Craig, good morning. Thank you very much. Uh, Good morning to you, Peter. It's uh, great to be here. Craig, you're a guy that's been involved in city politics for about the past 10, 15 years. Describe to us what your involvement in city politics has been. Uh, my, my involvement in, in city politics has, has been on a number of different levels. I've uh, in, started back in 1998. I, uh, I, I toyed with a, uh, an unsuccessful bid for, for state representative. Uh, there's, there's still a few jokes running around about that. And, uh, and uh, uh, back in 1999, I ran for uh, Ward 5 City Council uh, when, when, uh, when Councillor Denapoli first, first came into office. Uh, unfortunately, uh, we were unsuccessful with that one as well. Uh, since then, I've, I've kind of been around politics, helping other candidates, uh, either either uh, city candidates or, or different levels. I've, I've helped people like Mike Sullivan, Tim Cruz, uh, Charlie Baker, and Scott Brown. And uh, the, this this time, it's it's and, and I'm, I'm also the uh, Republic uh, the Brockton Republican City, city Committee Chairman. And uh, so I've, I've been involved in a lot of different local level campaigns. Um, but this time, um, it, a couple of vacant seats came up and it seemed, it seemed like the right time to run. Um, and the wife didn't, wasn't adamantly against it this time. What did you have to do to get her permission this time? Uh, basically, I, I got myself in trouble by, uh, by begging forgiveness instead of asking permission. So, there you go. That worked. <laughs> Well, let's talk about your bid for city council at large here in Brockton. What separates you from the other candidates? Um, what people will will see that a lot a lot of the a lot of us want the same things. I mean, there there are a lot of issues out there. Uh, everyone wants more pol- police on the streets. Everyone wants everyone wants to find ways to lower tax rates. Everyone wants to increase our our, our business community, our, our commercial tax base. Um, but it it really it it really everyone has has a different way of going about it. I believe that we need to grow our commercial tax base. Uh, number one, uh, a power plant would would number one be be the number one the number one biggest taxpayer in the city along with that and uh host city fees and water use uh would be a financial windfall for the city that would that would solve our immediate problem but we also need to work with our state state uh representatives and uh, state senator to have the have our our commonwealth restore local aid to the 2008 le- levels uh, a lot of people don't realize that we're down 10 million dollars a year from 2008 and that still has not been restored that's 10 million dollars that could put uh, 40 50 60 police officers on the street and 20 firefighters uh, as well as add additional equipment and technology. Um, so we need to restore our local aid. We need to grow our commercial tax base. And we also need to uh, streamline our business processes. Um, it's great, at, I, and I, I applaud uh, to the, every, everyone involved with bringing national chains into the city. Um, but if we ever want to revitalize the city and revitalize downtown, we need to make it easier for the mom and pops or the independent business owners to open up a business in the city and to do business in the city. Um, right now, uh, our permitting process and the inspection process is archaic. Um, some of the some of the departments don't take don't take anything but cash. Uh, some of them, uh, you know, you, ha- you have to wait months for for a hearing. Uh, and this this costs someone who's who's put put a mortgage on their home and invested their life savings in in, in opening up a business. This puts them at, at huge risk. Uh, we have we have to make this we have to streamline the processes and make make it easier. It it's a shame that you can go online. I can I can use my smartphone right here. Go online uh, to the town of Marshfield and schedule an inspection and apply for a permit right here online. But we can't do that in the city of Brockton. Why can't we do that? I don't know. But we need we need to we need to change that process. We need to make it easier for for businesses to to operate, um, and which which in turn once once we start doing that, uh, we'll start attracting more businesses, growing our commercial tax base, and then we can we can lower our tax rate, our, our oppressive tax rate, uh, in the in the in, for businesses on the city in the city of Brockton right now. You mentioned one big issue that separates you from other candidates in this council at large race, and that is that you support the proposed power plant coming to Brock, and you support uh, trying to work out a deal with the organizers of this power plant. Why do you support the power plant? I know you touched on that a little bit. And why do you think there is such vehement opposition? Why is it so controversial? Number one, I support it uh, because 
when when they filed the application, the zoning uh, ordinance allowed for a power generating plant. There's no way to get around that, and there's no way that, that we can stop a power plant from going from going in there. Number two, uh, we have decades of, of uh, data and decades of technology that goes into natural gas fired power plants. They're clean, they're safe, they're efficient. Uh, it's 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 the wave of the future. Uh, we just I just I just read in the paper that Pilgrim has been down again. Uh, and, and, and it's, it's been down uh, something like 60 days so far this year. Um, Pilgrim is going to be offline soon. They're going to take Brayton Point offline. Um, do they, so we're, we're, like it or not, we're going to see gas-fired power plants all, all over the place, smaller plants that are more efficient, uh, cost less money to operate, and makes, makes energy more, more affordable. Um, the power plant in Brockton will, will provide for a, a financial windfall for the city. It'll it'll first of all be be the be the top ta the, the biggest taxpayer in the city, um, and then with if we can negotiate a host city fee, uh, that's that's more more income to the city. They they'll need to buy uh, water to cool the turbines, whether that's effluent water from from the water treatment plant or if it's potable water from from the desal plant. That's either way, that's money that that helps benefit the city. Uh, if they use the effluent water, it'll it'll help increase our capacity at the, at the desal plant at the, at the water treatment plant. They've also offered at one point; it's now off the table because uh, we we fought uh, against them. Uh, and by the way, we're zero for nine in court against the power plant. We spent a million dollars fighting it. They were going to help us mitigate our problem with uh, the incineration of solid solid matter at the water treatment plant. That would have increased our capacity so that we could we could sell sewer capacity to places like uh, the Avon Industrial Park, which could be an economic engine for the region. Uh, but right now, we're limited because we can't process the solid matter in the, in the wastewater treatment plant. Why is there so much vocal opposition to the power plant, in your opinion? And what do you say to those folks that vocally oppose something that you're in favor of? To be honest with you, I've knocked on over a 1,000 doors, and they're less than 1% is the opposition to the power plant. There really is no no huge vocal. There's a loud opposition. Yes, it's vocal. It's vocal, uh, but there's no huge opposition to it. I think there there are some people that have gotten worked up. Some people that have been misled by by certain people in the community that uh, that believe a lot of the misinformation that's being being uh, thrown out there. Let's talk about public safety. You mentioned police and firefighters earlier. Uh, what is your plan? What would be a way to bring in? Uh, more police and more firefighters without spending and dipping into the stabilization fund, which has already been done. Number one, number one, we'll we'll, we'll go back uh, sitting down and negotiating with the power plant. Mm -hmm. uh, that that'll bring money into the city. Uh, we need we also need to uh, work with our state delegation to restore local aid. Um, after two thousand eight, uh, we've been down ten million dollars each year for the last five years since 2008 now the state revenues are up um how much higher than they expected and they just they also passed uh some some other tax increase they, they keep passing tax increases at the state level and people don't seem to worry about that but when they but when people talk about passing a tax increase at the local level they they, they get up in arms i think uh if people were more concerned about ta state tax increases uh it'd be it'd be more productive because they tax an awful lot more but beside the point we need to get our local aid up to up to 2008 levels um, that will allow us to put more feet on the streets. Um, that will make our streets safer. That'll that'll encourage people to actually invest in the city. Uh, when we, I don't. It it may it may, it may not be true. We have some larger societal issues. Uh, we may not be able to solve all the problems. Where we are a city, um, but if we have more of a presence, we can do something to combat the perception that we're the wild west. Um, then we then we can we can change people's attitudes to invest in the city. You mentioned the Aquaria desal plant, and those who have been following this election, those who listen to our show, know, know all of the issues surrounding the Aquaria desalination plant. You fall in line with the thinking of some other politicians running for some other offices in this general election, and that you would like the city of Brockton to purchase the Aquaria desal plant. Tell us why you feel that way. If there's a way to negotiate a, a, a price that's beneficial for the city of Brockton, um, with, I'm all in favor of purchasing the plant. If it, if it saves money for the ratepayers, and, and I, I, I spent four years on the Water Commission, and what, what my primary goal is to, to protect the ratepayers and make sure the, the water system maintains its integrity, and uh, we, say, we, we, we do our best to, uh, to keep costs down for the, for the ratepayers. I think purchasing the desal plant at this point uh, might be, could, might be the best way to go if, if, if the cards fall the right way. You mentioned a term that we've heard. I 
feel like every election in my entire lifetime in Brockton, the revitalization of downtown Brockton. You mentioned specifically mom and pop shops going in to downtown Brockton. Is it even likely that if you did put mom and pop shops or any shops for that matter in downtown Brockton, people would go there for shopping or has the consumer made the decision that they'd rather go to malls? What can be done to revitalize downtown Brockton? Is that really the answer? Um, I don't, I don't think we're going to get it, it. I don't think it's really going to be a shopping Mecca like it once was. Um, the people do go to malls. They, they even the indoor and closed malls are, are falling out of fashion. They're going more towards like a legacy place or a Patriots place and the, the outdoor type of type of facilities. I think what we can do for downtown is, is, is attract small businesses. That's going to be the economic engine for, for main street. Um, if we look at places like Hancock street and Quincy, uh, the historic district in new Bedford, the way they've they've revitalized it, they've they've added some some kind of small small shops and and places to go for entertainment. Um, we we need we need to to have. I, I was talking with someone a, a business owner about this this morning who's interested in investing downtown, but he needs to know what's going on with the Trinity Project and and everything else uh, before before he invests. Um, but, but but he's interested in opening a brew pub downtown. We need to attract more places like this that'll attract. Uh, a higher a higher quality of of consumer um, to to the downtown area, and once once we once we get that critical mass, once the training projects complete, the station lofts are complete. Um, hopefully, we can work a deal with with one of the one of the higher education institutions to open up a, a satellite campus downtown. We can build a critical mass that will support these types of businesses. We're chatting with Craig Pina here on AM fourteen sixty, the new WXBR candidate for councilor at large in the city of Brockton. You chose to run for councilor at large as opposed to a ward seat, which you have run for in the past. Why the at large seat as opposed to the Ward seat. It was really a uh, a practical decision. Um, I I've lived with my family in Ward Five for for five years. Um, I grew up in Ward Six on 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 Dandy Road uh, up the street from the Ashfield School, and I I spent a ten years in Ward Five, and now now uh, I moved with my family to Ward One. Uh, so it's I, my history is all over the city. Uh, it's not just in one ward. So I feel like I can represent the city better uh, as a at large counselor than as a as a Ward One counselor. What about your past experiences makes you think that you would be capable of handling the responsibilities that come with a council at large seat in Brockton? Um, I've been involved. I've been involved in the city for at least the last two decades. I've, I've I've run organizations. I know what it takes to organize organizations, and I know what it takes to to build collaborations. Uh, I I worked for for with Special Olympics uh, for seven years, and and generally in in the city of Brockton and the surrounding area, where we built the first of its kind program that was that was through a grant from Special Olympics International. We built the first of its kind program that that involved a collaboration between the school system, the business community, and city government. Uh, it's a model that not Special Olympics is now using nationally. For, for similar programs, and that was that was that, that was something that we used Brockton as kind of the uh, the experiment, and we saw the, the, they saw how successful it can be, and they they're duplicating it and improving it along the way in other in other cities. Uh, so I can I can build those collaborations so, and and do do things that haven't been done before. One thing that you don't often see in politics at the local level is what political party and any of the candidates are affiliated with because in truth it more often than not doesn't seem to matter at this level you are a proud republican and you are a you are in the republican brockton committee and whatnot this is a blue state and you're a red <laughs> state kind of guy does this help or hurt you um at, at, from the, from all the people i've talked to i don't think I, I like you said i don't think it really matters um, as a matter of fact, uh, some some of the stan- my stances on issues have gotten me in trouble with with some of my own party. Uh, so, I, I think local politics is entirely is an entirely different animal from state and federal in, in politics. Um, what we're what we're doing at the local level is trying to maintain services. Um, sometimes you you have to make decisions that go against what what one might think is is a republican decision so we're we're not going in and just trying to slash taxes because we know at the at the local level if we go in and slash taxes you're slashing police firefighters and teachers at the same time you can't do that uh so we we have to we have to find a way to maintain services um so it, 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 to sum it up at the local level I don't I don't think it really matters what issues going into this election have we not covered that you'd like to speak about 
Um, that, that's 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 pretty much it. We've we've covered everything. We've we've covered the the, the power plant, the desal plant, um, our our the, the economic growth in the city. Um, once once we make this the streets safe, and once we once we grow our, our our commercial tax base, that's when we that's when we can really start to to show a decrease in taxes. We 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 can't just go in there willy nilly and start cutting taxes and say, oh, we'll 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 cover it with our stabilization fund. That that's kind of a reckless way to go. Um, what we need to do is take a more common sense approach. Uh, we need we need to build some things first. We need to get police on the streets we need to build our commercial tax base then we can start to look at lowering taxes um once once we start using our stabilization funds and our reserves that affects our bond rating um with it with an increasing interest rate environment bond rates are going to go up why do we want to affect our bond rate that's going to cost more money down the road that will (laughs) inevitably mean less less investment in the city less police on the streets less firefighters and less teachers when you initially got involved in this council at large race, it seemed like almost the thing to do. Everyone, their mother and their brother, was running the net field. Yeah. Cut yeah. down from fifteen to eight. Why do you think you made the cut from fifteen to eight? Why do you think that uh, in that large group of people, you were one of the final top eight? Um, I've I've been around the city an awful long time. I, I've 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 done a lot of things and I've made a I've I've had a lot of success and and some failures, but I've learned from those. And uh, I think people know me, people have worked with me, and uh, they 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 know that that I've I've got a practical approach to to the way I go about my business. Um, I don't uh, think that um, it was any mistake that I came in fourth out of out of fifteen. Um, there there was no way I was going to finish. I was going to beat any either of the the incumbents. Um, but I, I I was pretty confident that I would finish exact exactly where I finished. Um, so I, uh, it's it's really from a history of being around the city and being involved in, uh, in different organizations and in and, and leadership positions. Is it fair to say that your positions on the power plant and the Aquaria D cell plant are the two main things that separate you from the other candidates running for the seat? Or um, seats, I should yeah, say. Yeah, I mean, you, people will hear the candidates say a lot of the same things. Um, like I said, we all want more police. We all want to lower taxes. We all want to grow uh, the economy in the city. It's it, it's how we go about it. Um, the desal plant, I think, is a more the desal and the power plant to me are more is more of a common sense approach. There are we have decades of data behind it. There is there are there are no health problems behind a nat- with a natural gas fired plant. Uh, there's just no evidence to to support that. Um, with the desal plant, um, we're we're stuck with something right now that twenty twenty hindsight is always twenty twenty. At the time when we when we entered the contract with the desal plant, it was the best way to go. Um, right now, we we didn't know, realize we were going to be able to solve a lot of our water problems by tightening up our own system. Um, so we're we're stuck with the situation we're in right now. We can we can criticize people about it, um, but. That's not going to change things. We're stuck with the situation we have right now. What we need to do is find the best way to manage the situation. It seems like your positions on the power plant and the desal plant fall most in line with that of Bill Carpenter as a candidate for mayor. Have you and him spoken about your positions on these issues at all? Uh, briefly. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm really um, concerned about my own race right now. I have a, I have a lot of friends and supporters who support both both mayoral candidates. So I, I, I you know, I, I – I, and I and I, I'm friends with both of them, uh, so I can't uh, I I can't say one or one or the other. Um, but yeah, I've I've talked with Bill and I've, I've we've I've talked with Linda and uh, we you know with and in, in in areas that we agree we can work together. In areas that we disagree, we can we can talk about it. Um, it's not something that uh, there's 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 no big animosity between me or either one of the mayoral candidates. November November fifth is the general election. You said fourth was exactly where you thought you would end up in the preliminaries. Where do you see yourself? What kind of mood are you going to be November sixth? Where do you see yourself? I see myself in a great mood on November sixth, and uh, my my goal my goal is to uh, is to uh, maintain the momentum that we had going into the preliminary and uh, build on it because every, everyone's working hard. Is there any final words for our listeners that you'd like to talk about this morning before we let you go? Um, no, nope. my name's Craig Pina, a candidate for Council at Large. This time I'll be number seven on the ballot uh, on November 5th, and I, I, I ask for your support. If you have any questions uh, about me, me or my, my positions on any of the issues, you can visit my website at www.pinaforbrockton.com. That's P-I-N-A-F-O-R Brockton.com. Uh, and I ask for your support and your vote on November 5th.
That is Craig Pina, candidate for council at large in the city of Brockton, joining us here on AM 1460, the new WXPR. Craig, thank you so much for coming in this morning. Thanks for having me. You're listening to the Metro South Morning Show, PM in the AM. Peter Zimborn, and Mike Paver here with you on a Wednesday. We're going to step aside for a quick break tomorrow during the 7 o'clock hour. We will have more council at large candidates. Right now, quick break. When we return, Mike Paver brings the local news update. Stick with us.